If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, we are going to look there at verses 12 through 13. This morning we're going to talk about God's armor. God's armor. You know, it just seems, as I told the early morning service this morning, just seems like God the last few months has kind of took us to a place to where um, a personal growth. Every message seems to be about a personal growth. I don't know why he would have me preach these messages on growing and being closer to him, but I do know that we are living in a hard time right now. It's a time that I believe the Bible speaks of, and I believe this with all my heart, that the, there's a great falling away from God's things, from God's Word. I believe that. And I think we're there now. And uh, I think a lot of times the old devil, he just, and it seems like here lately, that the old devil just throws out everything he can throw to try to trip us up and to try to get us off track. So I believe, I said all that, I believe that's the reason God would have me to preach all these messages. If you come on Wednesday night, you will find out that we have been preaching in the book of Genesis on some of these characters of Genesis, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and just the characteristics of their life. Of course, we know about Abraham, he was faithful. The Bible says about him that he was faithful, that he followed God no matter what. And so we talked about these characteristics. And I believe in our day and time that we need the same characteristics. We need the same goals and principles in our lives so that we can fight the things that are coming after us. And by the way, folks, they are coming after you. The devil is after you. And I know not many preachers preach on that, you know, a personal devil, but there is a personal devil, and he's after you, and he's in this world. And so we're going to talk about that this morning. Turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6, and stand, and we're going to read God's Word this morning, and then we'll get right into the message. Of course, these are familiar verses, and I know that you have read them many times in your Bible study. I hope you have, because they'll help you. The Bible says there in Ephesians 6, chapter, or chapter 6, verses 12 through 13, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore? Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. First of all, God in that two verses, he tells you that there is a devil, that there is somebody that is our enemy. And he tells us that we wrestle with these principalities, these powers, these rulers of this dark old world and wickedness in high places. So he gives you and tells us as Christians that we're going to fight this stuff, that it's going to be always there. But then he says to us, here's how you fight these things. Take on the whole armor of God. Prepare yourselves. Everybody listen to me this morning. Prepare yourself for what's coming because it is coming. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Thank you for what you're going to do for us this morning. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that we feel right now. Holy Spirit, we give you the right to do whatever you want to here this morning. We pray that you'll take this message, this service. Father, change our heart forevermore. Help us to never be the same because we've heard your word. And we pray these things in the most precious name I know. And that's the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Tell somebody you love them before you sit down this morning. Well, amen. Goodness. Boy, his name is powerful, isn't it? 
If you turn over to 1 Samuel, talking about armor, you will notice a little story there in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 38 and 39. And it's a story of a young man by the name of David. The story goes that, of course, David's father sent him to find his brothers or to be with his brothers. And when he came upon them, there was a scene that nobody really wanted to take care of. The Israelites, of course, was on one side, and then you had this giant on the other side, Goliath. And no one in the Israelite army would go fight him. So the Bible says that this young boy, who was probably in his teens, a little skinny boy, you know, he'd been out watching sheep probably, not too important, walked up and he seen what was going on and that this Goliath was, you know, talking about his God. And so he decided to do something about it. So he tells King Saul, and that's where we're at in this verse, that he would fight the giant, that he would do what none of the army or, or Saul himself would do. He would do it, David. And the Bible says here in verses 38 and 39, And Saul armed David with, with his armor. And he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put, off, put them off of him. If you study this scripture around armor, there's all kinds of scripture that we could use this morning. But in this scripture of Saul, you see that he has this young man and he offers him his armor. He offers him his, his clothes of battle, his clothes of war. Now, when I say that this morning, I really want to emphasize that because it really is clothes of war. I mean, if you think about it, that was kind of like their armor was kind of like me wearing a suit on Sunday morning and Sunday night and preaching in it. It was just part of the wardrobe that they wore to go to war. That's what they had. You've got to understand some things about this. Many times... We see this kindly played out in real life, you know, as this man was offering his armor to young David. You kindly see it played out in life just the other night, for instance. I was sitting on my couch, and my wife, don't tell her I said this, I know she's sitting there, but she lays her shoes everywhere. It drives me crazy. I mean, I trip over them all the time, man. I mean, just, so her shoes are laying there. And Ramsey comes in. I guess that was Thursday night, probably. Was it Thursday night? You ain't going to talk to me now, are you? Thursday or Friday night? <laughs> and uh, Ramsey comes in, and Ramsey puts those high heels on, you know. And she's flopping around the house with those high heels on, you know. And I'm thinking to myself, that is just the funniest thing I've ever seen. A little girl's foot about that big and wearing shoes about that big. And they're just flopping around on her feet. And I thought to myself, Lord, that's kind of the way David looked in Saul's armor, isn't it? I mean, it was just the funniest thing you've ever seen. And you say, well, preacher, why did it look that way? Well, just like with Ramsey, it didn't fit. <laughs> it didn't work. You know, when our little girls were little, they used to play dress up and all of those things, you know. And sometimes they put mom's clothes on and... They were just really big, you know, and they'd tie them around them and all that stuff. And it just looked so funny watching them kids do that. Well, it's the same thing that David was going through. I mean, Saul really wanted to be a help because he was too afraid to do the job himself. So he had this young man out there and he thought, well, 
at least I can do is try to protect him a little bit, you know. But it just didn't work because I'm telling you, folks, there's an important lesson here. A child of God can't wear someone else's armor. You can't do it because it won't work. It must be your own armor. You must arm yourself. You must be proven by God. And when I say that this morning, I, I mean that with, a, with all my heart. David said to King Saul, now you've got to understand, this is a young boy talking to the king. He says to him in 1 Samuel 17, 39, I cannot go with these. These don't work. They're not mine. I haven't proved them. And so he takes them off. You see, folks, the first thing I see about David is that he had his own convictions. I hope you have your own convictions today. I hope that you want to serve the Lord with all of your heart and do the right thing and kick off those things around you that are hindering you. I hope that's who you are. And I hope that's what you want. Because I'm here to tell you, in our day and time we live in, folks, you better have right convictions. Because this world and the devil will lie to you. David had his own convictions. He couldn't do it. He couldn't wear it. And he knew in his own heart that with the help of God. You see, folks, I think that's where we've gotten away from in our day and time. We forget that we have the help of the most powerful king in the universe. The help of God. I'd rather have the help of God than the help of all the kings that's ever been in this world. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I am saved, and I have God's help. David knew he had God's help. He had his convictions. But sometimes I like to ask people, you know, when they have all these problems and all this stuff going on, and it just seems like they can't get their feet on the ground, can't get going, I like to say sometimes to people, I wouldn't, but I'd like to say to them, whose armor are you wearing? If you're a child of God... Stand up and be counted. Quit being like you're being. You have power. You have God on your side. You don't have to back up to anyone. David knew that. Whose armor are you wearing today? Are you wearing your own or that which belongs to somebody else? Because you need to decide. How do you get your spiritual, you know, injections? Do you get them from somebody else, or do you get in the Word of God and get them for yourself? How do you get your strength and power every week to make it through a week? Do you get them from someone? Do you depend on everybody else to give that to you, or do you get it yourself? Because God needs to know. And God deserves to know where you're getting your power. The king offered his armor to David, but he said it won't work. In Ephesians chapter 6, as I read a few minutes ago, Paul describes the Christian spiritual armor. Now, I want to go over this, but I'm not going to do the message on this. That's another time. But he talks about a helmet of salvation. As we went through that prayer, you remember in 2 Chronicles, we went through that prayer, and the first thing was being his people. Are you God's people? In other words, salvation, are you really saved? Because I believe a lot of people in our day and time, they're, they're trying to put on armor, but they're not even children of God. Oh, they, they come to church and, and they enjoy music and they enjoy uh, preach and enjoy their Sunday school class, but they're really not children of God. They're, they're not saved. So you have to understand, if you're saved, put on that helmet of salvation. You have protection. I've got protection this morning. How about you? It's my salvation. He saved me. 
And I've got something that, that this old world doesn't have. I've got a peace about me that this world doesn't have. I've got this in my life and in my heart. Salvation. The helmet of salvation. The sword of the Spirit. Aren't you glad that the Spirit lives inside of you? Aren't you glad that when you get to sing in the praises of God like we just was, the Spirit of God just overwhelms you and lets you know how much He loves you? He hugs you up real tight. I'm so thankful for the Spirit of God this morning. I'm so thankful that when I got up this morning, He was with me. I'm so thankful when I went to bed last night, the Spirit of God was with me. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? The shield of faith. I can't live on your faith. I can't live on your faith. You can't live on my faith. I've got to live on my own faith. I've got to, in my life, live on my faith. I, I, I've got to, you know, I, I've got to build upon that. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you about those building blocks that we have that will build our faith. And that's part of our protection. Faith. Faith, He's going to bring me through. Faith, He's going to work it out. Faith, that I may be between a rock and a hard place, but He's going to get me out. Faith. God builds upon that all the time in my life. He says we got the gospel of peace. Boy, don't we? Man, when you're down and out, if you get in the Word of God, it's just peace to a soul. I mean, when somebody's going through something, pick out scriptures. It's peace to the soul. And then the breastplate of righteousness. It's not my righteousness. Whose is it? It's His. That's the way I live my life every day. I don't live my life depending on something making me happy like drugs or alcohol or a person or this or that or the things I do. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't depend on that. What I depend on is Jesus Christ making me happy. And a lot of people in this world are depending on everything else but Jesus. God says we need to recognize these things every single day of our lives. Every day. You know, sometimes it's not the armor that you can see. Sometimes it's our spiritual armor. You know, it's the armor that every Christian must wear uh, if we're going to have victory over Satan. Every morning we need to get up and put on the helmet of salvation. Every morning we need to get up and take that sword of the Spirit, that offense that we have. Every morning we need that shield of faith. Build your faith and the gospel of peace and the breastplate of righteousness. Every single day we need this. But what has happened in this whole world... And what has happened in the church house is we depend more on ourselves to fight the devil than we do for God to fight the devil. And we've got to learn it won't work. It never does. You'll be miserable, pitiful, stressed out, ready to quit, done, if you don't let Jesus lead your life. David said, I'd rather have Jesus than all these things. So this morning, just for a moment, that's just an introduction. Just, just a moment. <laughs> I want to talk about this armor. And I'm going to use three people to do that. And the first one I want to use is Saul's armor. I, I want you to listen to this because you've got to understand about Saul. This armor not fitting David, you've got to understand something about it. He was a big man. He was a considerable size man. The Bible even says this in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 2. It says this, and it's talking about Saul. It says he was a choice young man and goodly, and there was not among the children of Israel a good, goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward, read that with me, he was what? Yeah, he was a pretty good sized man. So to offer David this armor, he had to know, man, this little boy can't, 
he won't be able to carry the sword. Oh, no, no, everything else. I'm sure, I, I, I don't mean this in, I'm sure it was funny when you, he might have fell forward or backwards. I mean, you don't know. He might have fell to the ground. It was so heavy. And this man knew that. What's, what's going on with him? He knew that David couldn't wear this. He was just trying to make himself feel better. Let me give you some of what I've got. You know, a lot of people are like that. A lot of people are like that. They try to make their way, you know, uh, to God's good graces by giving things. Let me just give you this. And if I give you this, you know, that'll get me some points with God. But can I say something this morning? It doesn't get you anything with God. The only thing that gets you anything with God is your relationship with God. And it's sure to say Saul didn't have a relationship at this time with God. He didn't know anything. He, he, he didn't have a relationship with God because if he had a relationship with God, he would have had his spiritual armor as well as his physical armor. But he didn't have a relationship, so he's going to send somebody else to do his work. You see... If you think about it, now his physical armor fit him really good. There was nothing wrong with it. Matter of fact, this armor fits so good it was probably made for him because he's the king. I mean, they probably uh, did everything that needed to be done to make it fit him good. It fit him. He wore it outside, uh, armor. But what about... This outside armor. What, what, what is our outside armor? Because we have it. I know spiritually we put on the helmet of salvation and all this. But what is our, what can we do to arm ourselves on the outside? Saul had outside armor and it fit him well. But what can we do to battle our enemy? It, it's not Goliath, but there are some giants that pop up every now and then. Amen? What can we do? Simple things. And I believe God gave me this for you this morning. Listen, folks, I think the first thing we can do to arm ourselves on the outside is to be faithful to our church. I don't think preachers preach enough on how important church is. And I want to talk about that this morning. You that take church in a flippant way, you're wrong. And you're getting ready for a fall. You say, well, preacher, I don't believe that. Let me give you a little example. The first thing that happens if you don't love your church like you should, the first thing that happens is things start to diminish. Things like coming on Wednesday night or coming on Sunday night. Now, I don't want to make you mad. I'm just telling you. I mean, you look, Wednesday night's out, and then Sunday night's out, and before you know it, if you don't watch it, Sunday morning will be out. Oh, I don't need church. I don't need church. Well, let me just ask you something. Let's just say that all the churches in Johnson City just decided that all they're going to have is a big, you know, a big service on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. If you come, you come. If you don't, you don't. But they're not having church anymore. How'd that make you feel? Well, now, for some of you, now, you may get mad, but it'll be all right. For some of you, that'd be great. Well, I didn't want to come back anyway. Don't come back anyway. Don't want to come back. I'd watch that. I'd be careful with that. Because I'm telling you right now, listen to me. If I were the devil, the first thing I would do is get you to fall out of love with the church and what it means in your life. Because, folks, the church is the most important thing for fellowship and brothers and sisters to get together and, and worship the God. It's, it's the most important thing in this world that we have. Somebody said, how, do you, how important do you think the church is? I think it's so important that I've just about, Terry and I, and she can tell you, we just about give our whole adult life to ministering in the church. That's how important I think it is. This is a place where hurting people can come and get some healing. 
Uh, this is a place where people that are having spiritual problems can come and God can speak to their hearts. This is a place where we can come and hug a neck and say, I'm with you, sister. I'll pray for you. I, I love you. I, I'm hurting because you're hurting. You're my sister in Christ. You're my brother. That's what the church is. The church is a place where you can stand to your feet and sing, How great thou art. The church is a place where you bring your little kids and your grandkids and you take them to Sunday school and children's church and they teach them about the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ so that when they grow up to be teenagers, they can go into a teen church and praise the Lord and worship the Lord and know what they're doing and know what's going on and then they can come over to the big service and know it's about Jesus. That's what the church is. But somehow or another, the church has become less important than everything else. The second thing for armor is not only the church, but the second thing, and I know you know this, is the Word of God. I love the Word of God. You know, I try to get rid of my Bible. It's falling apart. I try to get rid of it, but I just can't get rid of it. It's just got so much in it that I put in there that I like to look at it every now and then. I, I just don't want to get rid of it. The pages are even tore where I've read it so much. And I know you do too. But you know what, folks? The Word of God is precious. Man, there's sometimes I'll get in there and I'll be... I'll just be confused and, and I'll be, you know, down and out and, and stressed out and, and going through panic and all this stuff and I'll get in the Word of God and it calms me. We need this. Most houses got five or six Bibles. Let's just say in, in the next few years that they come around, pass a law and say, you can't have any Bibles. And they come in your house and take all your Bibles and, and take all of the Scripture that you have. Do you know enough Scripture to live on? That's our armor. That's how we fight. That protects us, the Word of God. Those times, you know, the old devil will come at you and somebody will come and ask you a question. You've got to have an answer for those in need. You're a light. You're filled with Jesus. You're saved. Amen. You need an answer for those that are in need. I'm here to tell you this morning, the answer is part of your armor, and it's in the Word of God. How many would agree with me? Another part of our outside arm is not only the church and Bibles, but I believe Sunday school is important. I believe our singing is important. I believe the way we praise the Lord puts armor around us. I believe when we're singing, if we get the, the, when the, you know what I'm talking about, when the Holy Spirit starts bubbling up inside of you because you're talking about the one He loves dearly and you start praising His holy name and lifting up Jesus and saying, what a lovely, wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my Lord. And that Spirit bubbles up inside of you. That's worship. That's praise to the he deserves it. Look at me this morning. He deserves it. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's altogether lovely. He's the rose of Sharon, the bright morning star. He's the Alpha and Omega. He's everything. And that's who you're worshiping when you come to church where we should be for our armor on Sundays and Wednesdays. We're worshiping the King. We're praising Him. But I also believe part of our outside armor is the preaching of the Word. I believe the preaching of the Word is important. Now I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm not much for these milly mouth preachers. I'm not. I'm not, and I'm getting 
where I'm not too happy with some of it. I mean, they get a crowd and all they want to do is tell them a, a little outside story about something that ha happened in the news or something. That's crazy, folks. When you get people in church and you get people to preach to you, you ought to preach to them. And, you know, and listen, I, I, another thing. I think a preacher ought to be studied up. I think a preacher ought to study the Word of God. And I, I thank God for Josh. And I thank God for TJ. And these preachers that study and know the Word of God. I think when God puts you in a position to pastor a church and preach to the church, you ought to study and preach the Word. Don't preach no newspaper article or something that's been on the news or some funny story. Preach the Word. If you notice, I don't tell a lot of funny stories. Maybe you need one every now and then, but I don't. You want to know why? Because I've got usually 30 minutes on Sunday morning to get across what God gave me during the week. And I'm going to get it across. Preach. Preach the Word. Brittany showed me something this morning of a church that's somewhere in Indiana or whatever. And one of their, listen, I'm telling you the truth. One of their tracks that they sent out is how to have a beer with somebody that is a Christian. Now think about that. And they have four churches, four church campuses that are full. Think about that. This old world don't want Jesus. They want a club they can go to. I'm here to tell you this morning, I want Jesus. I want Him to show up when we come to church, don't you? And thank His holy name. He shows up. I know I'm preaching hard this morning, but I just feel like preaching hard. Amen. Now, I'll be tired tonight, so I won't preach so hard. Hmm. Preach the Word. Now, I want you to know, in all of this, uh, his spiritual armor, Saul, I'm talking about, and I've got to quit right here, but Saul, his spiritual armor didn't fit properly. Now, I want you to understand this, that there was a problem with him and his spiritual armor. There's some problems here this morning with people and their spiritual armor. There is. Now, you may deny it, but there is. You see, some of you that have been saved, you really just don't put all the pieces together for your spiritual armor. And that's the reason you have these problems all the time. You, you never grow. You never mature. You need to get off that milk and get on the meat. But, but you ain't doing nothing to put the pieces together. You're not laying out the pieces and putting them on spiritually. You're not. Oh, you may have salvation, but you've got to wrap yourself in it. Amen? You may have the breastplate, but you're not putting it on. You leave it laying sometimes. That's the reason you say things sometimes that you think to yourself, how in the world did I ever say that? I'm a Christian. I don't even think that way. I don't say things like that. You say those things and do those things because you're not equipped. You're not equipped like you need to be. And God wants to equip you. You see, Saul wasn't equipped like he should be spiritually. Now, he had all the physical attributes, but spiritually, what he had didn't fit too well. Matter of fact, it was pretty loose. Now, the Bible says that Saul had an experience with God. It, it tells us that. It tells us he had an experience with God. But he certainly didn't have any faith in God. You see, Christians, let me tell you something. You can be saved and still your faith can be low. Look at me. This is good stuff if you listen this morning. Your faith will be low. And a lot of people in church houses this morning, their faith is almost zilch. If you went through a horrible time right now, 
I'm telling you, if you don't grow that faith and grow that in your life, you're going to be in a mess. You're going to be in a mess. You know, the other night, and I say this because it's my grandchildren or my kids. Now, if I knew something about your kids like that, I'd say something about them if you'd allow me to, but I only know my kids. And, and when my little grandbaby fell down them steps the other night, 13 of them, guys. 13 steps, Mike. I mean, steep steps. And I thought to myself, you know, when she called us, I thought to myself, man, it could have broke his neck. And, and we didn't know. I mean, the ambulance hadn't even got there yet. We didn't know. It could have broke his back. It could have paralyzed him. It could have done all this. And Terry will tell you that when we left Amigos and got in our car going to the emergency room, I prayed, Lord Jesus, I'll love you no matter what. You're in control of everything. And Lord, all I ask is right now that you protect my grandchild. And Lord, we'll love you no matter what. And folks, I'm here to tell you, I surprised myself praying that prayer. Terry will tell you, I'm usually crazy, aren't I? I usually, when somebody gets hurt, I'm usually, she's the calm one. She's the nurse. But you know what? God just come over my spirit. And it's because of the faith. I know God will work it out no matter what. Amen? He will. No matter what. And you know, we got to the hospital and there was nothing. He didn't even have a bruise. Nothing. Matter of fact, he's sitting there laughing when I walked in. That's my God. That's God. You know, some of you, you say, well, I've got faith, and I had faith that Tristan would be healed. And I want to bring this up today because I think sometimes we get confused about that, don't we? The Bible says, Brother Mike, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. All things. All things. I know that young man was 20 years old, but you want to know what? My God could look five years down the road or two years down the road or a year down the road. My God said, I'd rather have him up here with me than suffering down there. And you know what? Listen to me. Look at me. I believe this with all my heart. He has no more pain. He has no more suffering. He's not laying in a hospital bed with tubes everywhere. Listen to me this morning. He's in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can just almost imagine him kicking up his feet on the streets of gold. Don't you feel sorry for him? Amen? Listen, when I leave this world, don't you feel sorry for me? Because I'm living my life to go to heaven. That's my reward. Amen? And I'm so glad that he's in heaven today with Jesus. Mm. I could preach a lot more, but you all couldn't handle it. So I'm going to end with this. Poor old Saul was a mess spiritually. <laughs> he was a mess. And some of you this morning, you're just a mess. You know it. And when I say that, it may hurt your feelings. You just have to get over it. You know you're a mess. You know you are. You know you ain't where you're supposed to be. You're not arming yourself like you're supposed to. You're in a battle every day. The devil is beating the dickens out of you. And you know it. And today, I'll give you a few keys of how to straighten that mess up. Now, whether you take it or not, that's up to you and God. But God's right here for you. He's right here for you. And he wants to do something in your life.
if you'll bow your heads. Lord Jesus, thank you for the word. I pray, God, that you'll use the word to touch people's hearts, minds, and souls. Change us, Father. Use us, Father. And help us. Help us. I'm going to ask you right now to step out from where you are. People are already coming. You're not by yourself. You know you need to come. Come on. Come on. Yeah, mean it too. When you get here, mean it. Mean what you're doing with the Lord. Talk to Him just like you talk to someone else. He's your daddy. He wants to change you. He wants to do something in you. But you've got to allow Him to. Arm yourself this morning. Arm yourself. Would you come right now? Right now. We're not going to linger. Stand and come right now. Spend some time with the Lord. Come.